Welcome to What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. In partnership with Common Frontiers, the Council on Hemispheric Affairs, Friends of Latin America, Massachusetts Peace Action, and Task Force on the Americas, we broadcast weekly on Code Pink's YouTube Live. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Telegram, and now at radindymedia.com. Today's episode, Argentina's vice president faces a quote-unquote media judicial firing squad. Our guest is Franco Mecasa. He's the director general of foreign affairs of the Argentine National Senate. Franco has been with us uh, before, so, so many of you will recognize him and appreciate uh, his voice and his comments today. I want to um, give you uh, a little introduction, or actually a quite... Um, impressive introduction to Franco before we start. Um, so he is a political activist in Argentina. He's involved in the Peronas Kishnerista movement of La Camfora. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> uh, he has a degree in government and international relations. He did his degree thesis on the Mercosur Parliament. He has held different positions related to international relations in the General Secretary of Argentina Presidency, Chamber of Representatives, and the National Bank of Argentina. He participated in several G20 summits, leading the youth delegation from his country, Mexico 2012, Russia 2013, Australia 2014. He is currently pursuing a PhD in defense. So, so we have a really uh, impressive guest today and a great friend from Argentina joining us. Um, we wanna talk about this week and we're so thankful that Franco has been able to make time for this conversation today. Um, I asked him to join us um, to talk about uh, this media and judicial firing squad that is uh, persecuting the vice president of Argentina. And in that regard, let me just give a brief background and then I'm gonna ask um, Franco to join us and um, give us his comments as he is on the ground in Buenos Aires. So here's a, a bit of background for all of you. On August 22nd, an Argentine federal prosecutor requested a 12-year prison sentence for Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, the country's former president and current vice president, on corruption charges related to public works. He also requested a lifetime ban on Fernandez from holding public office. Prosecutor Diego Luciani accused Fernandez de Kirchner of defrauding the state and involvement in a scheme to divert public funds while president between 2007 and 2015. The sentence will be known in months, according to local media, although the vice president could appeal to a higher court, which could take years to reach a final verdict. On Twitter, the vice president who testified uh, who testified in court in 2019, said she was facing a media judicial firing squad and not a constitutional court. The former president added that she was not given an opportunity to testify on new elements of the case and would present her defense on social media this week, which I believe uh, was Tuesday, and I can post that for all of you uh, to review. Argentina President Alberto Fernandez com commented, the decision on Twitter describing the decision in a statement as a case of judicial persecution. Quote, unquote, none of the acts attributed to the former president have been proven, he said. So let's talk about this, Franco, because uh, it seems to many of us, uh, myself included, and many in the audience, that we've seen this scenario before multiple times throughout Latin America as as social democrat to revolutionary left governments tend to rise and take over there are what we have come to call uh, soft coups legislative coups judicial coups uh economic coups and i think to a lot of us that appears to be what is potentially happening to your vice president at this moment yes hi terry so glad to to be here again uh, um, and thanks for, for the invitation. It's very important for us here in Argentina that our voice can be here uh, overseas and all over the world because it feels extremely unfair what we are experiencing. And as you said, it's not new. Uh, it's 
uh, thing we have already seen in the region. It's what we call lawfare. Uh, it's a war against uh, popular leaders, uh, which sometimes are called populist to, to lower the, the price and, and the prestigious of them, but they are not anything but popular leaders. And, and when, when we say popular, we are talking about the whole people, not the rich ones, not the rich ones precisely, uh, that have voted them, because we are talking here of democracy, we are not talking here of uh, some kind of god or goddess, they are just people like you, like me, like the ones that are hearing us, that have been involved in politics, have become leaders, national leaders of their countries, have been voted to, to, to be president, uh, or vice president in this case, and had made things uh, fair for the poorest one, for the most uh, for, forgetting, uh, for, for the ones that have been always been forgotten. Um, that's what we call popular leaders and what sometimes they call populists to lower the price. Let me tell you who is Christina Kirchner. You correctly said that she's our actual vice, pre vice president. She's the former president. She was twice president. The first time she has been president, is, it was in 20, um, 27, 2007. Uh, she won that election with 45 percent, I guess, here in Argentina, you need to get at least 45 percent to become president in, 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 in first round, not going to ballotage. Uh, she got 46, 47, something like that. So she was president. After she four was president years, in the first round. There was no need to go to the round. second round. That's significant. Yeah, no, okay. no, no need. The first yeah, round. That's significant. Four years later, Four years later, after four, four years of, 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 of being president, she, won, uh, she went to election uh, again, and she won with 54%. And the second one, the, 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 the second uh, candidate, only had 12 or 13. More than 40% of difference between her and the second one. So that's the way Christina Kirchner get, uh, become president <laughs> twice and now vice president. And what, this, uh, uh, what says this prosecutor, uh, you mentioned him, Luciani prosecutor, that all her government was um, what we call an association illicit. Uh, uh, association illicita, uh, like illicit group, the, the groups that, that come together to, I don't know, kill people, uh, 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 steal, uh, uh, kidnap people, etc., etc. So the first thing here is how come a government voted for this percentage, percentage I gave you Right. It being a, an illicit group, how come? Why would the majority of the population vote for such a government when that's exactly the, the, the candidacy that she represented was to get rid of all of that, and that horrific, that horrific history that, that Argentina has had. Yeah. I mean, I if mean, any, to me, if any country, you know, well, not Argentina among several, in, in Latin America, those of you that have had very harsh military dictatorships, you, you have a history and, a, and an intimate personal knowledge with that, with that form of governance. Yes. And Why would you reelect that for yourselves? <laughs> Crazy. It's super interesting what you're saying, because we have the, the, the history of dictatorship here in Argentina was extremely cruel. Uh, 30,000 people disappeared, died, uh, and et cetera. 
And one of the things that Christina Kirchner and, and, and Nestor Kirchner also uh, governments did was to take the dictator, the dictator ones, uh, not only the heads, also all the, the people that participated in that dictatorship, in that military dictatorship, take them to justice and, and have a, a good, um, a good procedure, a normal justice procedure with all the warranties, uh, but they, 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 they are in jail now. Well, most of them have died because they are old, but they, they went to jail because of the crimes they committed. Uh, and that's the thing they will, they will never forget, uh, forgive Christina, Christina Kirchner. And Luciani, prosecutor and all uh, and, and other ju uh, judges that are working in the same cause are familiar of those dictator ones. So that's a key issue to take in account. Wow. Yes. So, so this is uh, revenge, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Of yeah. course, it's revenge. revenge. Of course, yeah. it's revenge. I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah, like, like, uh, dare I say, like, you know, mafia revenge. That that type of, you know, it's uh, mafia activity. revenge. And uh, you know, the thing that uh, when we were introducing the episode, and the uh, the thing that really leaps out to me um, from the prosecutor is that. Uh, he is proposing that the vice president not be able to run for office ever again. This is what they did to Rafael Correa in Ecuador. Same. I would argue the same people are the, you know, the same, the same economic class of people, global economic class of people. Same, it's the same tool, pretty much. Yes. It, it's what we call proscription. And it's the same that they did to Peron 70 mm -hmm. years ago. Proscription. Christina Kirchner is uh, the most important leader, political leader uh, nowadays in Argentina. She's the only one that if she goes to election again, she's going to, to win probably because she has a lot of votes. Uh, so they don't want her because next year we have elections again. So they don't want her to become candidate because they know she's gonna win. So since they cannot beat her in free elections, they need to proscript her. That's the, the, the objective, the, the aim uh, this, this uh, lawfer has. So I, get, I, I'm, I apologize to you and to the audience. I didn't realize there are presidential elections in Argentina next year. I mean, everything like has this. to do with everything. <laughs> I'm like, why is this happening now? Well, of course. <laughs> I mean, I do know, you know, you had legislative uh, legislative elections when November of last year, correct? November 21st of 2021. October, October. October, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was, but of course. Uh, and when are the, when, when, when are the elections next year? Is there a date set? Bye. Yes, we we have the primary elections uh, in August, in August and in August, October we have the the general the general one. Okay, so a year away. It's like exactly, almost exactly a year away. It's August of twenty twenty two, and this is all happening <laughs> in advance. Uh, and what did what did say Christina the other day? Uh, because you know Terry that they didn't uh, let her uh, uh, proceed in her defense. Uh, she asked to have uh, an opportunity to defend herself, but she was forbidden of that. She was banned of that. So she made this YouTube uh, one hour and a half um, a speech uh, where it was super interesting. And what did she say there? Uh, and I think it's key to understand. It's not something against her. It's not that the uh, prosecutors and the justice do not like Christina, uh, personally do not like Christina. It has to do uh, to, make, to, 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 to insert fear in all of the political class, in all of the political 
activists, political leaders, uh, the youth, the youth, mm -hmm. uh, in order to do not mess with big power, do not mess with IMF, do not mess with corporation, do not mess with uh, dictatorship, do not mess with that because this is the end. So it's not personally against Christina, it's against Argentinian people. That's mm -hmm. how we understand it. So it's like, so to discredit her, to lawfare her out of office, and especially to perhaps prohibit her from ever running for office again, this is, I mean, I, I, I agree with you, it's a suppression of the people and what they want. What you as, as, as Argentine citizens want for yourselves and, and, your, and your country, and it's particularly telling that, um, that it's to in, uh, not to disrupt the IMF, not to disrupt, you say corporations, but probably, we're probably speaking about transnational corporations, transnational capital in the country no and also and also the 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 the, the, the national ones we also yeah. have uh, <laughs> the, the, inter, the internal enemy yeah yeah internal the rich too. ones yeah, yeah the, the rich ones uh, uh, different from from the united states where uh, maybe industrials are the the big ones the richest ones mm -hmm. here in argentina uh, the richest ones are uh, the ones who own the the land the the rural land those are our richest and that and that's been a a, a a land structure i mean i i i would argue for 500 years it's the structure throughout latin america well in north america too uh and it's a it's a it's a structure that um that in colombia maybe they've gotten rid of this month <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yes. Right, right? You know, like 200 years of, of Santanderismo, you know, not just Uribismo, but that, but that oligarchic class that has been run, you know, out of Bogota for 200 plus years. So it's the same sort of thing that, that uh, your vice president is up against in Argentina. It's just uh, maybe cloaked a little differently. And Colombia has been extraordinarily violent, but and your history has been violent too, but not so much in recent years, but it's, um, it's the same, it's this, she's up against the same sort of structure, the same exact structure. I would we have a, a common history here in Latin America, and that's uh, why we, we pursue the, the regional integration. Uh, we think that the world is becoming to move in blocks. You have a European Union, African Union, in the Pacific, in the Pacific Union. Well, China, Russia, United States are blocks uh, themselves yeah. because of yeah. their. Um, and Latin America needs to urgently uh, integrate, um, become a homogene block. And this is something that uh, we, we actually um, had a conversation about this a while back. Some of our yeah. audience may remember we did a Franco did a fantastic um, episode with us talking about um, Argentina becoming uh, the new president of CELAC and, and movement towards BRICS and and its position on the OAS. And so this is yet another this situation with your vice president with Christina is yet another example of why that evolution is needed. This is one more prime example of why there needs to be an, uh, uh, what you said, regional integration. And, and the, you know, Latin America and the Caribbean really, truly are moving that way, I, particularly since the, uh, the elections in Bolivia in October of 2020, and we had just a whole series of elections <laughs> through Latin America and the Caribbean, including Colombia, you know, earlier this month, and and now and now your your country next year, well, Brazil in in October, and then and then your country next year. So I mean, the the evolution is so clearly. I I I, I hesitate to even say that it's taking place. I would say it has taken place and is now you know growing, but but the evolution has already emerged you know and um and really 
for so many of us, we saw that I would argue really with the re um, the reinitiation of Salak last September after a four year pause, the reinitiation of Salak or the the summit in Mexico City September of of 2021. That there's that was such a bold and overt statement of what Latin America wants. And also yes, Honduras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Honduras. Hon you yeah, know that was such a huge oh you know. Well, it's just uh you know immediately with Honduras, and I know our audience knows this too, because because we were some of us with Code Pink were there on the ground for the Honduran elections and also for the inauguration. And the one thing that happened on inauguration day in Honduras, this was January 27th of this year. The first thing that Chiamara Castro did, first of all, she's the first woman president uh, of Honduras. The first, uh, the first foreign policy decision that she made was to recognize the Maduro government in Venezuela and reopen the Venezuelan embassy in Tegucigalpa. And that was all done very quietly, uh, but that was huge. And so that's the type of recognition and integration that we're watching unfold across the Americas, with the exception of North America, I would add. Well, we can't exactly include Mexico. US and Canada I have to be more specific They're, and um, not you know, willing to integrate. But this regional integration is huge. And I, I, and I think it's, it's also a, a statement of embracing uh, global multilateralism. We hemispheric multilateralism, but really global multilateralism and and pushing aside um, U.S. unilateralism. Yes, and 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 getting back to 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 Christina issue, uh, I don't know if you could see how all the leaders, not only presidents, all the leaders all across Latin America, had made tweeters or um, communiques. Uh, backing up uh, Christina Christina Kirchner and and and, and defending her that was uh, super uh, emotional. It happened for us. immediately. <laughs> yes. It happened immediately. I, yeah. Yeah. From from uh, from President uh, Lopez Obrador in Mexico to well al almost uh, every every country. I, I I didn't know Boric. I guess Boric uh, did not uh, say anything about it, but all uh, the rest of the leaders in, in Latin America did. Well, the the we all, when the leadership particularly recognizes the you know the scenario that's playing out. As we said earlier, it's familiar. We've seen it before in multiple countries with multiple uh, presidents, and. Um, Let's hope it doesn't succeed. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't see how it will. I mean, just listening to you know you talk, I, I don't see how it's it's possible because it's just it's so it's so obvious. I mean, it's just so obvious, and not just and not just to those of you in Argentina, but throughout the hemisphere, it's so it's so obvious at what the at what the game plan is or what the, what the objective. Yes, they, they 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 won't do it. They cannot do it. We are all uh, mobi mobilized, and we are uh, per permanently. Since this happened, there are twenty four seven people, mostly youth, but also the older ones in in the in the front door of Christina Kirchner apartment. Uh, it's a, it's I, I'm gonna cut with you, and I'm going running to. <laughs> there oh, okay, we are, <laughs> we we are singing. <laughs> we are singing. We are uh, all together, and it's uh, the other day I was talking to uh, uh, a, a, a person I crossed there, and and we said it's uh, strange because we we should be angry, we should be sad, we should be worried. But we are happy. We are like uh, proud of mm -hmm. us, of care, of what we are doing as a, a mobilized people, and, and 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 what we feel for our country. And we are going to do whatever is necessary to protect her because protecting her, we are protecting us and the future exactly. of our country. Yes, 
Exactly. I think that that's, I, to me, Ronco, that's probably, you know, the soundbite <laughs> from the episode in protecting her, you are protecting yourselves and your country. That's so true. And that's where, um, that's really, again, as we talked about before we uh, went live, the importance, and we did a whole episode on this theme last night, uh, the importance of having movements around a party and candidates is because, you know, it has to, you, you, you work so hard to organize on the ground across the country and to get uh, your voices represented in government. But then once you have achieved that, that representation in government, that person, that party that you've elected needs continual support from the ground up as well. I mean, it works both ways, right? Top down and bottom up is that you're both complementing uh, each other's uh, agendas. Yes, that's our, that's the thing that we, we really have worked here. Uh, and it has to do with our history of Peronism. Peronism was a uh, um, structure around uh, popular organization political organization. Organization is the key to understand uh, Peronism in Argentina and, and, and Kirchnerism, which a lot of people say that is the Peronism of 21st century, uh, has the same root, has the same uh, organization or political praxis. Well, it's, it's phenomenal and um... We are all, you know, in solidarity with you, your people, your nation, your vice president, and um, we will do what we need to, you know, to keep the word out there, to keep the story, you know, highlighted. Is there anything that you would like those of us uh, in North America to do? What can we do? I, I, I you, think it's for your country for this this moment of you know threat. I think we, we we need to be to, to talk more about real corruption because mm. corruption, which is very very hard to to argue to talk about because it's not comfortable to talk about corruption, but that's what uh, the fact powers, the, the concentrated powers have used because they very clever, in a very clever way, they found that talking about corruption and, 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 and trying to link corruption with popular leaders was easy and, 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 and people, even the ones that, that are uh, being uh, protected for those leaders, tend to believe and tend to repeat. So I think it's important to, to say this, that the use of corruption to, to link popular leaders uh, with bad things uh, is what we all need to deconstruct. Well, it's not gonna be successful this time. <laughs> 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 Terry, so nice talking to you. And please promise me you're going to come. I I, I will be there. I, I will okay. be there. I'm so thankful for the invitation and I will definitely um, make plans to, to see you. Perfect. Perfect. And your country and your people. So so we'll let you go to uh, to your vice president's <laughs> home and stand in solidarity with her and your nation and, and all, all your citizens. I'm so thankful for your time today. This is such an important story and we will be sure to share it far and wide. And um, let me just remind um, our audience that you have been listening to What the F is going on in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. We broadcast every week on Code Pink YouTube Live. Um, you can also now find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Telegram, and Rad Indie Media. And please be sure to catch Code Pink Radio every Thursday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern on WBAI New York City, WPFW Washington, D.C. That program is also rebroadcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. So, Franco, we'll get your story out uh, in many, many uh, media sources and continue Thanks to support you in your country. So, Thanks a so lot thank for looking at us. 
Oh, thank you for your time today. And, uh, and please uh, give our solidarity greetings to, to Christina Kirshner for us. I will. Ciao.